In a significant development, the Supreme Court today stated the order of the Uttarakhand High Court for the removal of occupants in railway lands in Haldwani, based on which the authorities issued eviction notices to over 4,000 families who claim that they have been residing in the area for years based on valid documents recognized by the government authorities. Taking exception to the High Court direction to remove the occupants in seven days, the Supreme Court today observed with dismay that there cannot be uprooting of 50,000 people in seven days. A bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Abhay S. Oka passed the order while issuing notice to the state of Uttarakhand and the railways in a batch of special leave petitions filed against the judgment passed by a division bench of the High Court on December 20th last year. The Supreme Court posted the matter to February 7th, asking the state and the railways to find a practical solution. The bench today was particularly concerned with the fact that many of the occupants have been residing there for decades, claiming rights on the basis of leases and auction purchases. Justice S.K. Call asked today during the hearing, and I quote, there are two aspects of the issue. One, they claim leases. Two, they say people migrated after 1947 and the lands were auctioned. People stayed there for so many years. Some rehabilitation has to be given. There are establishments there. How can you say in seven days, clear them off? Justice Oka also added that people have been staying there for almost 50 years. Emphasizing that there is a human angle to it which must be considered, Justice called for the remark during the hearing today and I quote again, What is troubling us that how do you deal with the scenario of people who have purchased the land and auction? You may acquire the land and utilize, other is people have lived there for 50 to 60 years, some rehabilitation scheme has to be done even assuming it is railway land. Justice Oka also pointed out today that the High Court had passed the order without hearing the affected parties. Supplementing Justice Oka, Justice Call also took exception to the High Court's directions, which had stipulated that parliamentary forces must be deployed to remove the residents and accordingly remarked today, and I quote here, it may not be correct to say that parliamentary forces have to be deployed to remove people who have been living there for decades. Additional Solicitor General of India, Aishwarya Bharti, submitted that the state and the railways are on the same page that the land belongs to the railways. She also submitted that several orders for eviction have been passed under the Public Premises Act. On the other hand, however, during the hearing today, Advocate Prashant Bhushan, appearing for the petitioner, submitted that they were ex parte orders passed during the COVID period. Senior advocate Dr. Colin Gonsalves, also appearing on behalf of the petitioners, asserted that the possession of the land has been with the petitioners since prior independence and that they have been possession of the government leases which were executed in their favour. Similarly, senior advocate Siddharth Lutra also asserted that many petitioners had government leases executed in favour of them. To provide a bit of context, the petition filed before the Supreme Court highlights that the petitioners are poor people who have been lawful residents of Mohalla Nai Basti Haldwani district for more than 70 years. As per the petitioners, the Uttarakhand High Court ordered the summary eviction of more than 20,000 people residing in more than 4,000 houses, despite the fact that proceedings regarding the title of the residents were pending before the district magistrate. It has also been asserted that the names of local residents are entered in the municipal records of house tax register and that they have been paying house tax regularly for years. Further, there are five government schools, one hospital and two overhead water tanks in the area. It has also been contended that the long-settled physical possession of the petitioners and their ancestors some even prior to the date of Indian independence, has been recognized by the state and its agencies and that they have been given gas and water connections and even Aadhaar card numbers accepting their residential addresses. Thank you. I'm Aratrika Bhomik for Live Law. Keep watching Live Law for more such updates.